Hello and welcome to MBKM Models, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and follow for more aircraft documentaries and model build videos. The Merlin engine for the Spitfire was built at the factory where I did my apprenticeship, after a year of broad based engineering training and to my surprise receiving above average marks for hand skills I was given my first trade choice as an apprentice sheet metal fitter for jet aero engines. The Supermarine Spitfire is a British single seat fighter aircraft used by the Royal Air Force and other allied countries before, during, and after World War II. Many variants of the Spitfire were built from the Mark I to the Rolls-Royce Griffin engined Mark 24 using several wing configurations and guns. It was the only British fighter produced continuously throughout the war and the Spitfire remains popular among enthusiasts. Around 70 remain airworthy and many more are static exhibits in aviation museums throughout the world. The Spitfire was designed as a short-range high-performance interceptor aircraft by R.J. Mitchell, chief designer at Supermarine Aviation Works, which operated as a subsidiary of Vickers Armstrong from 1928. Mitchell developed the Spitfire's distinctive elliptical wing with innovative sunken rivets designed by Beverly Shinstone to have the thinnest possible cross-section achieving a potential top speed greater than that of several contemporary fighter aircraft including the Hawker Hurricane. Mitchell continued to refine the design until his death in 1937, whereupon his colleague Joseph Smith took over as chief designer, overseeing the Spitfire's development through many variants. During the Battle of Britain from July until October 1940 the public perceived the Spitfire to be the main RAF fighter, in fact the more numerous hurricanes shouldered more of the burden of resisting the Luftwaffe. The Spitfire was a better fighter aircraft than the Hurricane. Spitfire units had a lower attrition rate and a higher victory to loss ratio than those flying hurricanes probably because of the Spitfire's higher performance. During the battle, Spitfires were generally tasked with engaging Luftwaffe fighters mainly Messerschmitt Bf 109E series aircraft, which were a close match for them. After the Battle of Britain, the Spitfire superseded the Hurricane as the principal aircraft of RAF Fighter Command, and was used in the European, Mediterranean, Pacific, and Southeast Asian theatres. Much loved by its pilots the Spitfire operated in several roles including interceptor, photo reconnaissance, fighter bomber, and trainer and it continued to do so until the 1950s. The Sea Fire was an aircraft carrier based adapted version of the Spitfire used in the fleet air arm from 1942 until the mid 1950s. The original airframe was designed to be powered by a Rolls Royce Merlin engine producing 1,030A horsepower 768A kilowatts. It was strong enough and adaptable enough to use increasingly powerful Merlins and, in later marks, Rolls Royce Griffin engine producing up to 2,340A horsepower 1,745A kilowatts. As a result the Spitfire's performance and capabilities improved over the course of its service life. Operational History The operational history of the Spitfire with the RAF began with the first Mark I SK9789, which entered service with 19 Squadron at RAF Duxford on 4 August 1938. The Spitfire achieved legendary status during the Battle of Britain. A reputation aided by the Spitfire Fund organized and run by Lord Beaverbrook, the Minister of Aircraft Production. In fact, the Hurricane outnumbered the Spitfire throughout the battle, and shouldered the burden of the defense against the Luftwaffe because of its higher performance. The overall attrition rate of the Spitfire squadrons was lower than that of the Hurricane units, and the Spitfire units had a higher victory to loss ratio. The key aim of Fighter Command was to stop the Luftwaffe's bombers in practice whenever possible, the tactic was to use Spitfires to counter German escort fighters, by then based in northern France, particularly the Bf-109s, while the Hurricane squadrons attacked the bombers. Well-known Spitfire pilots included Johnny Johnson 34 enemy aircraft shot down who flew the Spitfire right through his operational career from late 1940 until 1945. 
Douglas Barker and Bob Tuck flew Spitfires and Hurricanes during the major air battles of 1940. Both were shot down and became prisoners of war while flying Spitfires over France in 1941 and 1942. Paddy Finucane scored all his successes in the fighter before disappearing over the English Channel in July 1942. Some notable Commonwealth pilots were George Bulling from Canada, Sailor Marlan from South Africa, New Zealanders Alan Deer and C.F. Gray and the Australian Hugo Armstrong. The Spitfire continued to play increasingly diverse roles throughout the Second World War and beyond, often in air forces other than the RAF for example. The Spitfire became the first high-speed photo reconnaissance aircraft to be operated by the RAF, sometimes unarmed, they flew at high medium and low altitudes, often ranging far into enemy territory to closely observe the Axis powers and provide an almost continual flow of valuable intelligence information throughout the war. In 1941 and 1942 PIU Spitfires provided the first photographs of the Freya and Würzburg radar systems and in 1943 helped confirm that the Germans were building the V-1 and V-2 vengeance weapons by photographing Peenemunde on the Baltic Sea coast of Germany. In the Mediterranean, the Spitfire blunted the heavy attacks on Malta by the Region Aeronautica and Luftwaffe, and from early 1943, helped pave the way for the Allied invasions of Sicily and Italy. On 7 March 1942, 15 Mark V's carrying 90-gallon fuel tanks under their bellies took off from HMSR Eagle off the coast of Algeria on a 600-mile 978km flight to Malta. Those Spitfire Fives were the first to see service outside Britain. The Spitfire also served on the Eastern Front with the Soviet Air Force. The first deliveries of the Spitfire Mark 5B variant took place at the start of 1943, with the first batch of 35 aircraft delivered via sea to the city of Basra, Iraq. A total of 143 aircraft and 50 furnished hulls to be used for spare parts followed by March of the same year. Though some aircraft were used for frontline duty in 1943, most of them saw service with the anti-air defense branch. In 1944, the USSR received the substantially improved Mark 9 variant, with the first aircraft delivered in February. Initially, these were refurbished aircraft but subsequent shipments were factory new. A total of 1,185 aircraft of this model were delivered through Iran, Iraq and the Arctic to northern Soviet ports. Two of these were the Spitfire HF Mark 9 high-altitude modification while the remainder were the low-altitude LF Mark 9. The last Lend-Lease shipment carrying the Mark 9 arrived at the port of Severodinsk on 12 June 1945. The Spitfire also served in the Pacific Theater, meeting the Japanese Mitsubishi A6M0, Lieutenant General Claire Shinno said. The RAF pilots were trained in methods that were excellent against German and Italian equipment but suicide against the acrobatic Japs, although not as fast as the Spitfire the Zero could outturn the Spitfire, could sustain a climb at a very steep angle and could stay in the air for three times as long. To counter the Zero Spitfire pilots adopted a slash and run policy and used their faster speed and diving superiority to fight while avoiding turning in dogfights. The Allies achieved air superiority when the Mark 8 version was introduced to the theater, replacing the earlier Mark 5. In one memorable encounter, New Zealand ace Alan Pert fought a solo dogfight against two dozen Japanese aircraft attacking the Broadway airstrip shooting down one. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening and until next time.